Mr John Nicholson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, let me begin with what surely we all agree on. None of us in this House support Daesh. All of us want to see them defeated. As an atheist, I shiver with horror when I see and read Christians being beheaded. As a gay man, I weep to see homosexuals thrown from buildings in Syria. So let no one on either side of the House impugn the motives of people who speak in this debate. However, let us remember recent debates. It is not unkind, I think, to remind those who claimed that bombing would bring order to Iraq 12 years ago and to Syria two years ago of how wrong they were. Now, the Right Honourable Member for Chingford and Woodford Green told this House in the Iraqi war debate the following. The idea that this action would become a recruiting sergeant for those who are anti-West is, I am afraid, nonsense. The same Right Honourable Gentleman now sits in the Cabinet and advocates a new bombing campaign against another Middle Eastern foe, but arguing very much the same line. You see, this debate pits mostly the same arguments with the same proponents as did the Iraqi war. I was a journalist at the time. I got to interview all the main political players and the country's leading experts in chemical warfare, missile accuracy and Sunni Shiite politics. And I concluded that while Saddam was a monster, he was a monster who controlled the monsters. Now, the Labour government and the Tory front bench disagreed, and they removed Saddam, thereby unleashing the forces of medieval hell on Iraq and its neighbours. As Eliza Manningham Butler, Director General of MI5 during the invasion, put it, the bombing increased the terrorist threat by convincing more people in the region that Islam was under attack. It provided an arena for jihad. Now, the armchair generals might be chastened, one might have thought, but no. Two years ago, and by then in government, the Conservatives asked this House to bomb the region again, this time to bomb another secular despot, President Assad. But wisely, the House refused. Yes, I will. I thank the Honourable Member for giving me. The, the Honourable men, Member mentions that he. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, the Honourable Member mentions that we all want to see the end of Daesh. If we pass this motion this evening, I, and I would invite him to join us in the lobbies, our precision airstrikes can destroy Daesh supply lines and, more importantly, the terror training facilities, which are a danger to his constituents in Eastern Bartonshire, as they are in South Leicestershire and the whole of the United Kingdom. Why doesn't he support that? Interventions must be brief, not many speeches, however eloquent. Mr John Nicholson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If bombing destroy, could destroy Daesh, then surely the dozen countries that are already bombing Daesh would have already succeeded in that aim. Without a blush, the government, which 24 months ago wanted to bomb President Assad, now wants us to bomb his enemies. And as members, we are offered ever more florid claims by the Conservative front bench and its Labour allies. Perhaps the most absurd that we have heard today is that 70,000 fighters spread across Iraq from disparate groups and with no central command or shared vision will march collectively thousands of miles to support a British bombing mission. It is clearly and utterly absurd, Mr Speaker, and that argument has fallen apart during today's debate. So let's examine whether the UK's bombing would make a difference, as the Honourable Gentleman contends that it would. I don't think so. Between August 2014 and August of this year, 17,000 bombs were dropped on Iraq. Twelve countries are bombing Syria at the moment, including Russia, the United States, Canada and France. It's reported that 2,104 civilians have been killed in collateral damage in 267 separate bombing incidents in the last year alone. It is a disgrace, and further bombing will not help. Now, the UN's envoy to Syria says the following. All evidence shows that the overwhelming majority of all the civilian victims in the Syrian conflict have been caused so far by the use of aerial weapons. Now, Daesh is not a Napoleonic army standing out in the open waiting to be attacked. They want to draw us into the conflict. They hide in civilian areas and they use human shields. They rely on our folly, our arrogance and our lack of cultural understanding. 
as the Muslim Council of Britain's Dr. Suja Jaffe says, as more innocent people die from airstrikes, the appeal of Daesh will strengthen. Daesh craves more Western military inv- intervention in the region. We urge MPs to learn lessons from the past and not to vote for extending bombing. Let us not repeat the mistakes of the past. We will kill numerous civilians. We will radicalise the bereaved survivors. We have no credible peace plan in place. We are being fed ludicrous statistics, and on a wing and a prayer, we are hoping for better luck this time. Let's say no.